watch me viz. I haven't done one of these in a long time. And some of you have requested that I try to show you my solution for workout Wednesday week four. So that's what I'm going to do today. It's a really, it's a, a, a pretty straightforward solution. And we'll go through that in just a second. But first, let me share my screen. If you have any questions along the way, feel free to uh, to leave those in the chat, and I will do my best to keep an eye on that if I can. It's not necessarily the, uh, the easiest thing to do. So you should now see my screen on the right-hand side. Very good. Let me move myself down to the corner. And uh, yes, yeah, so what we're going to do here, this is the challenge. We want to be able to compare to a selected month. Right, so we've got some requirements here. The big thing here in the requirements is no LODs and no table calcs, right? So that's gonna throw a lot of people off right there. Um, and we wanna be able to click on a month and it will update the sales and line. You see, we've got the reference lines and then the chart at the bottom will be a comparison to whatever that value is. So let's look at the solution here. This is mine. Um, and what I've done here, actually I'm on the wrong sheet. So let's go ahead and uh, if we click on a month, you'll see that, that everything now compares to the month of November. And I've got my labels here for the month. Um, if I compare everything to, let's say, October, you'll see down here everything now compares to October. And we've got a bit of tool tips in here, too. So let's see how far we can get in the next few minutes. And this is just using Superstore. And, uh, and let's get going here. So let me go ahead and switch over to Tableau. And I'm going to just connect to Superstore here on the left-hand side. Now, this might be a bit quick, but uh, bear with me because I am um, uh, trying to get the solution. You can always pause it later and, and slow down and watch it. So, uh, okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to uh, right-click and drag the order date field to the columns. And I know I want to have continuous months. So I've looked back here at the solution. I have an axis down here, and it's at the monthly level. So I want to make sure I pick continuous months and click on OK. The alternative also, and this is actually something we're going to need to do anyway, is if I right click on the order date field, I could create a custom date. And I'm, I'm going to need to do that anyway. So let me just go ahead and do that. I'll call it month. My detail is going to be months. And I want it to be the date value. So that's going to give me a continuous uh, continuous month. So hit OK. And uh, we actually, let's just go ahead and put that on the columns instead. That'll make it a bit simpler. If you look at my solution, um, I actually didn't do that, but that's okay. We can come back to that, come back to that later. Okay, let's drag sales to the rows. And we get something like that pretty, again, pretty straightforward, right? I'm going to go ahead and uh, yeah, let's leave it like that for now. What we want to do now is I'm going to ignore the bottom for now. Let's just work on the top and work on these two reference lines. So these are actually driven by parameters. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two parameters. The first one I'm going to call my, uh, my month selected parameter. And this is going to just be a date field. And uh, for now, I'll just type in there maybe 2024. And let's just do 0101. Um, I'm just trying to make sure it's the beginning of a month and hit OK. And then let's go ahead and show that parameter. And now uh, what we want to do is we want to have a reference line. So if I look back here in the solution, we have a reference line going up and down on that mark that we selected. So I'm going to just simply right click on my axis and add a reference line. And it's going to be instead of the field month, it's going to be based on my month selected parameter. My label will be the value, so that's the month itself. And uh, it looks like we want to do. It looks like it's a uh, it's a dotted line, and uh, yeah, that is pretty good there. And then click on OK. Let's look at the format. So it says uh, OK. So that all looks good. All right. So that's our first reference line. And let's go ahead and while we're here, let's set up our dashboard action. Or sorry, our worksheet action. Because what we want to do is when we click on a uh, a month. We want our parameter to update to that month, and we want our reference line to move over to that mark. So I'm going to go up to Worksheet Actions, and I'm going to add a change parameter action. And I'm going to call this Update Month uh, month Selected Parameter. Um, my source sheet is going to be Sheet 1. I'm going to need to change this when I go to the dashboard. Uh, I need to choose my month selected parameter, and the field I want to pass to it is my month field. I want to run it when I click on something. And when they clear it, I want to go ahead and make sure the reference line stays there. So I'm going to leave it as uh, keep current month and then click on OK. 
click on okay again. And now when I click on a mark, you'll see the reference line moves to that mark and we are good to go. Okay, so that's the reference line for the, uh, for the month gone. And now we wanna create another parameter that is our sales parameter. And this is gonna capture the sales for the month that I click on. So let's make this a, uh, we'll just make it a, an integer and it is going to be, uh, we're gonna leave this as all the current value. It doesn't really matter what's in there now. Let's click on okay and then show that parameter. And now what we're gonna happen is, so for example, if I click on November, 2022, my month parameter is updating to, uh, sorry, December, 2022, and my sales parameter now needs to update to 75,973. So we're gonna create another worksheet action. And we're gonna do a change parameter action, and this will be update sales parameter. Our parameter, our target parameter is our sales parameter. Our source field is sales, and we will keep the current value when they click off. Okay, so that's good to go. Click on okay. And now when I click on a mark, notice my parameter updates, my reference line moves, good to go. And now I wanna add in this, uh, this hard, uh, sorry, yeah, this horizontal reference line. So to do that, I'm gonna right click on my sales axis and add a reference line, similar to what I did down at the bottom. Uh, let's see, the value isn't going to be sales, it's gonna be my sales parameter. The label needs to be the value itself. So let's label the value. And then I'm gonna format this the same way as before. All right, click on okay. And again, if I click on something, I should see both reference lines move and both of my parameters update. So great, so that is good, that's working. That's exactly what we want it to do. Okay, so now the tricky part is this second, uh, this second chart here at the bottom. So this is the difference from the selected sales. Okay, so we already have the value for the sales parameter, it's 59,688. What we wanna do is we wanna compare each value here to the value of the parameter. And we're just gonna do that with a simple calculation. Let's create a new calculated field. Oh, let me bring this window over and I'll call this uh, difference from selected sales. And my calculation is just going to be the sum of sales. Come on, drag that in here, sum of sales minus my sales parameter. That's it, super, super simple. Click on okay. Drag that to the rows and you'll see we now get another line chart at the bottom, but we want that to be a bar chart. So on the marks card, I'm gonna first go to sum of sales and I'll make that a, uh, I'll change that to a line just to be specific with it. And on the difference from, I'm gonna change that to be a bar. Okay, oops, change that to be a bar. Okay, very good. So now we just wanna drag that same field onto the color shelf, sort of double encoding there. And uh, the solution uses this kind of orange to um, green um, color palette. So I'm just going to double click on my color palette. And when I look at the options, there is, is there an orange to green? There really isn't an orange to green. I've got a custom one, orange to aqua. So I'll, I'll use that one. And I'm going to force, I'm going to go into advanced and force the center to zero because if I don't do that and I choose maybe the lowest value, then Tableau is still going to use the range because I forced it to use a diverging color palette here. So I'm just going to force the center to zero and click on okay. And there we go, everything looks nice and neat there. But our bar, notice how our bars are touching each other, right? They're, they're right up against each other. If I go back to the solution, uh, you can see they're very close to each other, right? Um, so what I want to do then is uh, go back to Tableau. Oop. Yeah, there we go. And I'm gonna click on the size shelf here and I'm gonna uh, just drag this over to make it as big as possible. You see that's closer, but not quite what I was looking for. So I'm gonna just choose fixed here and I'm gonna make the alignment centered and my width and my units, um, I want to use my, uh, my, my month field. So how can I do that? So if I just make it 30, let's say if I just make it 30, then we get pretty close, right? You get all of the months. It's gonna be slightly different for maybe uh, February and stuff, but generally this is gonna give us 30 days. Maybe I'll make it like 28. So we can account for, uh, for uh, February. And in the color shelf, I'm gonna now go ahead and uh, I'll just stick maybe some white borders on there to make it look a bit nicer. Okay, so that's that's good enough for me. Okay, so um, that's pretty much it, but let's do a bit of cleanup now. 
Uh, so we have the labels on the reference line, so that's good. Our tooltip, let's fix our tooltip in our uh, in our um, axis here, or sorry, on our on our uh, line. So you see right now it says November. It's got a bunch of junk there. Well, I don't want my parameter in the tooltip, so uh, I don't think I can go over here and uncheck show parameter. I don't know when Tableau started automatically putting that in the parameter, but I find it a bit a bit annoying. Um, so I'm going to just go to my tooltip shelf. And I'm just going to customize it. So I'm going to choose month. I'm going to get rid of my parameters and then sales. Okay, I'll uncheck these options. And now that looks pretty good. And go down here to the bottom. And again, we want to do the same thing here. So let's go to our bar chart. Click on tooltip. Get rid of month. And uh, if I look at the solution, you'll see down here it says difference from selected sales. Okay, difference from selected sales. Again, I'm going to uncheck these, and there we go. Now, in this solution, let me look at my solution here because I'm curious to remember what I did for the size. Um, I clicked on size. I made it fixed on the left. I actually didn't choose anything. Interesting. Okay. Um, so let me go back then and try something else. So if I go here and I change my size to fixed, I'm going to make it left aligned and then reset. OK, notice they kind of go away now. So um, let's see. If I put month on to detail, does that do anything? OK, so I've lost my axes, which is very interesting, uh, probably because I set the border. So let's make that automatic again. And um, so let me go back here. So the only difference here, we've got the month field. So that, that doesn't change anything. OK, so size, we are fixed no width and then left aligned okay interesting i wonder why it works one time and, and not another okay anyway so what i'll do then is i don't think i can put the month on the size that's not going to yeah see that oh that looks pretty cool but that's not gonna that's not gonna do it for us okay so um what we could probably do is uh let's see if i want to make them exactly the same size what i could do is i could write a um that's okay. I'm not going to worry about it. I think I'm overthinking it here. So again, I'm going to go into bars. Uh, let's make it left aligned. And let's do, uh, let's just say 28 days. And again, that gets us, that gets us pretty close. It's uh, good enough for now. Um, and then as long as you put the borders on, I think it looks fine. Okay. And then in the final solution, we've got, we have no grid lines. So I'm going to right click on the view and choose format and uh, go to my lines option here and turn my grid lines on and back off. And I want to turn my zero lines off as well. Let's see. No, my zero lines are on. So let me undo that. And what else do I have here? Um, I think that's it. Is that all the formatting I need to do? Yeah. And uh, so, you know, I would then just copy the title. So what I do for that usually is I'll just go to the website and I'll just copy the title from here. And then I'll go into my sheet and I'll just paste the title, and then I'll enter that. So they use Rubik for the font. So I'm actually going to just go ahead and change the whole workbook to Rubik then. So I'll do that by going up the Format Workbook. And in the All Fonts, I'm going to choose Rubik. And that looks like we've got the whole solution now. Let's edit our axis at the bottom. Ah. And we need to get rid of the title. And let's close that. And now when we put this into a dashboard, so the requirements say that the dashboard needs to be 1,000 by 800. OK, so I'm going to create a dashboard. That's just the typical size for a Tableau dashboard. I'm going to kill the phone layout and drag the sheet in. OK, now I'm going to get rid of everything here on the right-hand side. So let's just delete those containers. And now I need to go up to my dashboard actions. And for each of these actions, if I edit the first one, notice how it's just run on a sheet now. I need to change this to be a dashboard action. It's only going to run on sheet one. Everything's good to go. OK, so this is just a quick way to change an action from a dashboard action to a, work, uh, a worksheet action to a dashboard action. Click on OK again. Um, and yeah, so then you click. It should move. Oh, but look at that. Notice how it's highlighting, right? We don't want it to do that. You see how it's highlighting the bar at the bottom? Yeah, we don't, we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little trickery here. I'm going to create two calculated fields. I'm going to call this one T. And it's just going to have a true in it. 
just the word true, the function true. I'm going to create another one called F, and that's just going to have the false function. Click on OK, and I'll put that up, put both of those on the all marks card. And now over on my dashboard, I want to create a dashboard action. And we're going to add an action, which is a actually a filter action. So I'm going to call I'm going to call it remove highlight, even though I know it's a, a, a filter action. I'm going to run it on that sheet on select um, in the target sheets. I want to make sure make sure that you pick just the sheet. Don't leave it as the dashboard here. You want to choose show all values, and down here in the selected fields, you want to choose false equals true. That's never going to happen, so it's never going to filter. So click on OK, click on OK again, and now when I click on a mark, everything moves and we are good to go. So if you found that solution helpful, uh, so let me double click on that. OK, so if you found that solution helpful, uh, please let me know in the comments. I'd love your feedback. And if you'd like more of these, please leave comments and I can see what I can do depending on the time. And I hope you found that useful and have yourself a great day. Bye.